Please do not make the same mistake I did, or at least let's talk about it so you know exactly what you're getting into when you switch from Canon to Sony. What is up guys, Anthony here from Next Level Creators and we have to talk about this. I'm seeing it every day from our students in our filmmaking program and I hear it all the time from people I know who are also filmmakers. What should I buy? The new Canon R5, the new Sony a7S III, the original R, the original a7 III, or maybe the Panasonic S1H or maybe those Blackmagic cameras. The list goes on and on and I wanted to make this video today to shed some light on how you should handle the never ending and constantly changing landscape of modern cameras. What started this all for me was when Canon announced the new R5 earlier this year. We had heard rumors of it, but then once the features were finally confirmed, I was blown away. Now I was a happy and proud owner of the Canon 1DX Mark II and the original EOS R and a few other cameras on top of that. But this announcement shook me. Given the fact that we've been teaching online courses for filmmakers for years and recently started releasing a bunch more content on YouTube, I figured it would be a good investment for our business to purchase a new camera and the R5 was the one. And I wasn't alone. Pretty much everyone in the industry was nodding their heads saying, yup, Canon, you won. This is the best camera out there right now for this price. But then Sony had to poke its head up and add a bunch more stress to people's lives by announcing the five year wait was over and that the Sony a7S III is here. Now, before Sony's announcement was made, the field was a little easier to play. If you were in the market, it made sense to go out and get a new Canon R5 because that camera just seemed incredible. But now everyone was like, oh crap, the Sony a7S III looks amazing, but is it better than the R5? I don't know, it doesn't shoot AK, blah. It was just one side or the other and that divide between Canon and Sony only got bigger. So personally, at this time we'd actually ordered two R5s, one for myself and one for Paul, but I was thinking, you know what, let's cancel one of the R5s and get a Sony so we can really see for ourselves which is better and it'll give us content to create for the YouTube channel and we can do tutorials on them in the course and whatnot. Now here, given the fact that I shoot the majority of the content for our business, Paul said when they come in, you just pick whichever you prefer and I'll take what's left over. And let's just take a moment there. What a guy, Paul letting me get first dibs on the camera. I probably would have fought to the death to get first dibs and he just gave it to me. Gotta thank him for that. But nonetheless, finally, the R5 started shipping and boy did things heat up. And that was just a terrible dad joke about the R5's overheating. But seriously, the picture changed again once the overheating problems of the R5 really started popping up everywhere. I was definitely thinking to myself that I would probably be sticking with Sony once the camera was finally delivered. Then finally, the R5 we had ordered actually got delivered and it was freaking awesome. At the time, it was definitely the best camera I had ever owned. It was better than the 1DX Mark II, obviously better than the EOS R, and better than a lot of the cinema cameras that I had rented in the past. The overheating problem, the thing that basically everybody in the world wouldn't stop talking about, wasn't a big deal either. Still to this day, I have not had one issue with overheating. I just simply choose to stay away from the modes that I know overheat. I have no desire to shoot 30 minutes of footage at 8K resolution that's just gonna eat through my storage. So either way, not an issue. And on top of that, we do have a full in-depth review of the R5, which you can watch on our channel. You can watch that and learn as much as you want about the camera. But in short, it's a really, really good camera. Despite all of this though, Based on what I was reading about the Sony, I still felt like it was gonna be the better camera when all the dust had settled. It was comparable in almost all areas. Yes, it doesn't have 8K, but it does have better low light and more dynamic range, two features that really mean a lot to me. And then finally, the a7S III arrived, and just like the R5, it lived up to the hype. Amazing camera, no doubt about it. But here's the thing. Almost immediately after opening up the a7S III, I was filled with regret. Now, it's mixed emotions for sure, but let me explain. I have probably about $7,000 worth of Canon lenses. Some lenses that I use every single day and other lenses that I rarely ever use, but when I do need them, they are extremely valuable. On top of that, all of my ND filters, my batteries, my memory cards, my memory card readers, all of my accessories, 
They're all for Canon cameras. Now, of course, this wasn't news to me. I knew that this was gonna happen, but I had gotten a Canon EF to Sony E-mount adapter, but I quickly learned that autofocus wasn't going to work as well as I wanted it to with this adapter. And now we're getting to the theme of this entire video. What did it actually cost me to switch camera brands? Well, first we have over $3,000 spent on actually purchasing the camera body, $300 or so dollars getting the adapter that didn't work, $400 on memory cards and card readers, $200 on batteries, and another $3,000 buying Sony E-mount lenses. And it really sucked spending all that money on lenses because essentially I was buying lenses that I already owned just specifically for Sony cameras. Money is something that we can always generate more of by working and if we want more we just can work harder. What really bothers me is the time I lost throughout this entire process. I wasted days when the cameras were first announced, doing research, reading blogs, watching speculation videos and so on. When the R5 got here I spent days learning the new system, updating my editing workflow to account for the different files and codecs. Then the A7S III got here and I have to spend even more time adapting to a new system that I'd never used before. Having spent literally years using one camera system in Canon, the Sony system is very different. Now this again by itself wasn't the end of the world, it's not terribly hard switching systems, but I lost a ton of time in the process. I spent a solid 14 hours doing research on lenses for the new Sony. Did I want to go G Master, Sigma, Tamron? What focal length should I buy based on my current line of Canon lenses and what I like to shoot? Essentially drawing that line between what do I want and what do I need. From there I had to wait for the lenses to come in and then we had to actually test the new lenses. All of this is a ton of short-term losses of time that really add up when you stack them on top of each other. When we think of the editing workflow changes, they stack up even more. I could color grade C-log footage in like five seconds. Now the Sony footage is gonna take me longer because it's new. S-log is different than C-log. Now it's not gonna take me a ton of extra time, but when you add up that 20% increase in time over hundreds and hundreds of hours spent grading footage, it becomes pretty significant. Now, I know I'm going on here, but when we look and add all of this up, that's thousands of dollars spent on gear and weeks worth of time lost adjusting to that new gear. And yeah, you might be thinking to yourself, but now you have the better camera. But let's actually think, what did I get out of switching camera brands? The Sony a7S III has better low light and slightly better dynamic range. That's really it. And the real kicker here is 99.9% .9 of the people that watch my videos, whether that's followers on social media, viewers here on YouTube, clients of my production company, students in our courses, they are never going to be able to tell the difference. So I'll ask you now, do you think the entire investment, both time and money, was worth the potentially negligible difference in quality that I got from switching from Canon to Sony? As you can probably guess, my answer to that question is absolutely not. How could any logical person think that that was worth it? But this experience though, essentially all of that crap that I went through switching camera brands, is a small part of the much bigger picture that a lot of filmmakers are struggling with that keeps them from getting from where they are now to where they want to be, and it applies to all levels. If you're just getting started, the number one thing that will hold you back is focusing on gear over learning and practicing. Now, on the other side, if you're already running a filmmaking business, constantly watching gear videos and trying to justify upgrading is time you could have spent marketing and selling your services. I think about myself in this current situation. If I took the 25 hours, and that's being modest, that I invested into this brand swap and spent it sending emails, talking to prospects, networking, and earning new clients, I easily could have made twice the amount of money that it cost to buy all of this gear. And that's again one of the biggest issues issues that I see with modern day filmmakers. What's more fun, researching new gear or doing outreach to land more clients? Gear is obviously more fun, so that's what everyone does. But then we complain about not being able to afford the gear. Instead of complaining, we need to really analyze our time and ask ourselves, how many outreach emails did I send in the past two weeks? Well, if you didn't send any emails, you cannot expect to make more money. You're relying on referrals and word of mouth. Now, maybe this isn't you and you don't spend a ton of time on YouTube watching videos about gear instead of actually practicing, but if it is you, let me give you a piece of advice that I'm constantly reminding myself of in my business. And hopefully it can serve as the primary learning point from this video so you actually got something actionable out of this. Here it is. 
My time is my most valuable resource, and I need to spend it more carefully than I spend anything else in my life, especially money. The better you can track how you spend your time and optimize that spending to be as efficient as possible, the closer you will get to achieving your goals in a much faster time frame, no matter what those goals are. They can be about filmmaking or they can be about something entirely different. If you can continually analyze how you spend your time and optimize so you're getting better and better each day, each week, each month, two years from now, you are going to be a completely different person. So with all of this being said, let me save you guys some time by simplifying your decision-making process on gear moving forward. If you have very little to no gear whatsoever, my recommendation would be to start in the Sony camera system. There's absolutely nothing wrong with Canon or any of the other camera brands, but I do think the Sony a7S III is the best of the mirrorless world right now. And if Sony keeps going in the direction they have been, it's the brand you want to invest your money in because they're constantly pushing the boundaries of what's possible with cameras. But if you don't have any gear, don't start with the a7S III. That is just way too expensive for your first camera. If anything, go with a used Sony a7 III the Sony ZV-1, or another cheaper option. Now, on the flip side, if you already own Canon or another brand, just stick with it. All of the major camera brands nowadays, they all have cameras that pass that threshold of so good you can't tell the difference anymore. Whether that's Panasonic, Fuji, even Nikon has options now. Focus less on the gear and more on the craft itself. You'll find yourself getting better much faster if you can really commit to this. Now, this entire concept is exactly why we created our program 14 Day Filmmaker. We are all about speed and this program was designed to give you all the knowledge you could possibly need to start your own six figure filmmaking business in the shortest time frame possible. Our program covers everything from the basic fundamentals of picking up cameras for the first time and getting cinematic shots to to the more advanced components of creative editing strategies and landing clients. Since launching, we've had over 13,000 students enroll in the program and they tell us every day they're blown away by how easy it is to learn this stuff when they're not being distracted by YouTube and the millions of confusing videos on this platform. Not to mention, I can guarantee you this is the most affordable program on the planet with this much content for filmmakers. We even have student discounts on things like the Adobe Creative Cloud suite of applications if you're interested in this video, you can learn all about it by clicking the link in the description beneath this video. Other than that, make sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, follow us on Instagram, comment what you thought of the video beneath this and all that other fun stuff. And last but not least, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.